Have you ever wondered what it's like on a river tugboat hauling log booms up and down all day? Well, we're doing it. We're on a tugboat today. We always think about the captain's job, but more importantly, I'm gonna show you the job these guys do to oh. keep it all working. I'm Michael, the channel is Downey Live. That's Tyrell. We're getting this one started. It's currently 5.22 in the morning, and today, we're gonna ride on a tugboat. Oh, sick. There you go, Thank you, cheers. No Everybody meet Tyrell. He's uh, showing us around on the boat today. He also has the best last name, I think, of anyone I know. <laughs> Hammer Jackson. Well, nice day to be on the water. Justin, what's up? This is our captain, Justin. <laughs> and this is home for the next 12 hours? Yeah. More. Or more. <laughs> now before every shift, Captain Justin checks the engine oil and turns on the battery. This boat has two diesel engines, each with about 500 horsepower. How do you start a tugboat? Quite easy. Push to start. Oh, look at that. Pretty good for diesel. You ready to rock and roll? Are you? Yes. <laughs> yes. You ready to rock and roll? We're out of here, buddy. All right. Start to a good day. If this isn't a Canadian moment, I don't know what it is. I gotta say, this tugboat's faster than I expected. We're not towing anything, so I guess that makes sense. So this is a sawmill where they chop up wood. But in order for that to work, they need wood. Wood is obviously cut out of the forest, it's brought down to rivers, put into log booms, and then brought down the rivers to here, stored on the side of the shore. So we are the middleman, pull the log booms, to the mill. We're coming up on our first mill of the day. So Tyrell right now is communicating with this tugboat there, telling him to push or let go. Let's breathe. Let's breathe. Let's breathe. They're not just pulling random log booms. Each one is labeled individually, and they give you specific instructions about which log boom they want. Now that we got the boom here, we just have to tie it off to this so it doesn't float away. Hey! <laughs> the day's just started. I know. <laughs> Fresh coffee delivery? That's right. The Hammer Express. <laughs> Special delivery. Fresh pot on the go. We got everyone coming in for the famous hammer coffee here. This cafe oh, on the seas. <laughs> so now what? Now I think we're heading to the jetty or we might get fuel. Time to fuel up. Pulling up to the Chevron right now. Here, fill up. How many tanks do you guys have on this boat? We got four on this one. Two bows, two sterns. How long is it going to take to fill? Oh, if they're empty, should be about 10 minutes here. I do not want to. Maybe I do want to know how much it's going to cost to fill this thing up. Uh, I, don't, I don't want to know. Yeah, I <laughs> Just 166 liters. I swear there's some pickup trucks that take that. What's that, uh, fill the toilet tank, basically? Now, let's do a tugboat tour. This is the River Rebel. This being the back of the boat, this is the giant winch cable. So when we're towing a log boom, that's a no-go zone. Just in case the cable snaps, we don't want to be back here. Let me show you inside the cabin. This is Captain Justin's face. This steers it. Let's <laughs> this makes it go. No, no. Batteries, radar, maps, radios, 13 GPS, depth and sounder, yeah. 14 feet under us. I'm shocked at how shallow it is here. That's part of the river for sure. Yeah. Now coming back to the living room slash dining area. Get your little bench, your little yeah. table. Hang out. I don't want to call it the nap space. It's a, it's a workspace. Yeah. A workspace. Over here we have the kitchen. You have yourself a microwave, stove top, fridge, and a sink back here under the pizza. And of course, the most important, the coffee maker. <laughs> and that's about it. But where's the washroom? Oh, it's down there. You want to see? <laughs> the way he said, ooh. I'm, I'm impressed it's got water in it, so it works. Avoid that if, as best we can for emergencies only, I think. You want to show me the bottom of your boots? Oh, yeah. I wish I could say it would save you from falling in, but I think the smile says it all. He's gone in a couple times. Hammer not the best swimmer. No? Oh, no. <laughs> Those 
booms the ground on the beach. Yeah, I could try to rip it off, but the risk first reward, not worth it. Not now, worth it. it is a river, so there's always a constant current. However, you can see all these log booms are being beached at the moment because the tide is going down. Basically, to deal with these, we need to wait for it to get high tide so they're floating again. We'll come do that later. So what I just learned are logs can't be stored in salt water. So right up there is the mouth of the river. It's where the ocean meets the freshwater river. We're gonna grab the specific log booms we've been sent to pick up, and we're gonna haul them up the river for storage or to go straight to the mill because the logs are gonna rot in salt water. So uh, to fresh water they go. So you just threw that log boom together for us. The top end of our toe, we're building everything behind this. Gotcha. So we're gonna, this is gonna get much longer. Way longer. Moving wood. That's what I'm talking about. All there is to it. Wait. So we all understand that a tugboat captain drives the boat, but Tyrell's job as a deckhand is a lot more physical. This is one of the most dangerous jobs in Canada. The risk of Tyrell falling in and being crushed or pinned between these logs is ever present and top of mind for him, even if he doesn't show it. Tyrell runs out along the logs to find the tie-off points to unhook the log booms from shore. But to unhook the boom, he needs slack in the chain, which is where Captain Justin comes in. He'll drive the tugboat around to the other side to push the log boom upstream, enough to give Tyrell that slack he needs to get the chain undone. This job obviously entirely relies on the tugboat and the tug captain. But none of this would be possible without the deckhand essentially doing all the work. Now that the log boom is disconnected from shore, they have to connect it to the back of the log boom they'll be towing. And they'll keep doing that until they have the log boom all connected and in the right order to start pulling it upstream to the moon. So we're connected there and we're connected here. As long as this connects properly. Well, that's a happy man. 49 sections, I think, each at 66 feet long. That's just about 3,300 feet long, which is, if you're Canadian, a full kilometer. So Justin, yeah. I think it all comes down to you now, fortunately. <laughs> Ty sits down and now you drive. Yeah. Lean back a little bit and then probably clean something. If you have time for leaning, you have time for cleaning. <laughs> this is the spot. Rooftop deck? Oh, I see. Good vantage point. Make sure we got our uh, clean boom behind us. So the, the reason we waited until this point of the day to hook up all of those log booms and pull them up now is because the tide has switched and the tide is now coming up river. So we're, we're going with the current. And with the current. How fast did you say we're going? Uh, I'd say roughly 1.2, 1.5 knots straight now, yeah. Not very fast. And because the tide is coming now, all the tugboat companies are on the same schedule. We got two boats there, us, one, two, three, four, five more tugs down there behind us. And basically we'll all be in a single file line making our way upstream. How far do we have to go? At least 10 miles. How long do you think that'll take? Seven to nine hours. We'll be towing this for the next seven to nine hours. There we go, settle in folks. Chef Tyrell about to get started here. What do we have, Chef Tyrell? A couple cows here. Get those roasted potatoes. He's got a full cauliflower. Dude. Straight up cooking in here. Everything okay? Okay, so these two guys were helping us pull, but we just broke. So they're gonna turn around, wrangle up the piece that broke off, pull back together. Basically, it's not just attaching a chain. If it breaks, you have to re-cable it. Really important not to panic. Sometimes it's hard not to panic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I can imagine a log boom this size breaks open in the current in the river. You could have them floating all over the place. Oh, yeah. Well, if you're not fast enough to keep pulling, yeah. You just rip the toe in half and it's really hard to put it back together then. Right. This looks like they're got under control within seconds. So. Yeah, crisis averted. Time for him to head back to his side and uh, we're gonna keep on pulling. Yeah, okay. Okay, we got a pizza box as the cutting board. Yeah, your potatoes roasting. This is master chef. Coming close. I mean, I was joking earlier, I called it the cafe when he was serving coffee to everyone, but he's pretty much running a full restaurant out of this stuff here. See how she tastes, but... Now, I pull out mine, stir fry from last night, will be nothing. Be nothing compared to yours. It's not bad. Lunch with a view, it's a little loud, but other than that, it's pretty perfect. So, how did you get into being a deckhand? How do you get started in this? A couple guys here, like, 
Like Eric, the guy you just met, yeah. he's a good buddy of mine. Eric was like, yo, you should come be a deck hand. It's a good job for a guy like you. Like you get to stay active all day. Kind of just followed his steps, trained with him, and then trained with these guys. And sooner or later, I got the job. So basically, your friends roped you into it. Pretty much. Pretty yeah. much. You're still here three and a half years later. Yeah. yeah. Would you recommend it to your younger self? Yeah, I would. Yeah, get that kid in shape earlier for sure. Yeah. Right. I, I, I say it's for everybody, but it's not for everybody. You no. know what I'm saying? But if you want good hard work outdoors, but this is your office view. Mind you, it's a summer day. Winter, I think, is a yes. different scenario. Yeah. Good lunch. But uh, some of us are having a post-lunch nap. This is what happens, kids, when you work hard. You gotta get in those snoozes when you can. Just as long as Justin isn't doing the same thing. That's, uh, you know, different, yeah. Well, we got us a drag race. He has about 1,800 horsepower while we only have 1,000, so it makes sense he decided to pass us. It's not exactly quick, though, is it? It's probably over, over excited because it's my first day. Yeah, you know, these guys. There he is. Yeah. yeah, see? Everyone comes out to see it. It's the only excitement we have. Yeah, what? Let's go! Hey, give me one! Let's hear it! I can't find it. We're getting passed on both sides here. We're the slowest ones out here. But that's the tug life. I think he recognized me. That's awesome. Oh, nice. Little tradesies. See, how are you, bud? Making a motion feature or what? Nice. Uh, full, full length. We're coming up to some bridges right now. It's a pinch point where obviously it gets significantly narrower between the bridge posts. So this is where Captain Justin, he'll be standing while driving through because uh, he doesn't want to catch the tail end and rip it all apart. Luckily we have two tugs behind us. As we come through the curve and through the bridge, they'll be pushing it to make sure it stays off the posts. To a train bridge. Actually, we've got two train bridges coming up. This one's a straight shot through, so it's a little bit on the easier side. The next one is around a corner and it's narrower. It's the hardest of the day. I'm not gonna lie, that's not a lot of room on each side. And that's exactly why they work in teams. Now I want to see the next one. It's still holding good, so I'd like to know. Let me know in the comments if this is a job you think you could do. Pulling logs for seven hours. Would you get bored or is this the greatest job in the world? And this train crossing is the second one. This is the last one of the day before we drop this boom off. Justin, you got this. Totally got it, buddy. Just, no stress. what do you do? Do you help spot this at all or are you just still here to let them know it's right behind them? Yeah. <laughs> still there. Justin, there. she's right behind you, buddy! Ooh. Is this snug? Gonna be tight! Look, there's plenty of room for the tugboat to make it through. It's not us I'm worried about. It's that. We have about 10 feet on that side. I'd say 8 feet on that side. Jesse at the back watching our tail. That was close. Tyrell, you nailed it up here. Your suntan looks great. Thank you. <laughs> you say it's no problem at all, but you know, you got you got within a foot on the right, I think. It's not fun unless it's tight, boys. <laughs> you wouldn't let me go out with anyone but the best for safety reasons. <laughs> no, yeah. Okay, that's funny. <laughs> this is it, Ty. It's your last job of the day. Make it look good. We're all watching. Oh yeah. Look at that. What? This is it, Ty. One, one more. One more. This is it. See, I, I don't do any of this. So I might as well coach and cheerlead. Get that. Don't leave it in the water. You got that. Almost, almost. That's the day. That's a shift right there. Here we go. Jesse. These guys. Yeah. Go.
I've linked him right here. The man is worth watching. Let's go! <laughs> I've learned anything from today is that there's a lot of good, hardworking people in this world. And if you're ever near a river, walking along a pier or driving across a bridge, and you see a tugboat, give him a wave. Uh, I guarantee he'll wave back. Ah, uh, silence. That is a day on a tugboat. Thank you, Tyrell, Justin, for taking us on board. I'm Mike, and these adventure videos come out every single Saturday. And I always say, I don't know where I'm going next, but I know I want you there with me. So subscribe if you're new here, and if you want to watch another video right now, I recommend that one. See you next time.